I think it's my accent because I don't pronounce ERs when I'm just talking regularly, like I'm talking to y'all, like I'm talking to my mama. It's an A, swindler. It's not gonna be a swindler, like I'm not at work. Swindler, tender swindler, tender swindler. That's, what What project management software was this man using to finagle these women out their coins like that is what I'm trying to figure out. Why, if you in crisis, I gotta be a, a criminal? Like, I don't understand. Like, victims can be dumb too is what I'm saying. That's the moral of the story. Victims can be stupid as well. Cause Cecilia was like, oh, you need me to um give you my left arm? Bet, let me go amputate that thing myself. I'll be back, I got a real sharp knife in the kitchen. This is the Nigerian prince that was asking people for money at Facebook like 12 years ago. The Nigerian prince walked so Simon could run, okay? Hey everybody, thank you so much for checking out this video. It's your girl LB, welcome to my channel. Watch with me LB, where I give you fun, fresh, and funny. Ranks reviews and recaps on my favorite movies and TV shows, and we here to talk about the Tinder Swindler. Y'all asked me for it, and I'm here to talk, okay? Because there are several things that crossed my mind when watching this documentary. One of the things that came across my mind that was most prevalent and stuck around for me the most, okay, was just how. How? Like, how did this happen? Like, how? did people get the audacity? How did this man keep all these girls organized? Because for the two, the three swindled that we got on a documentary, I'm sure it's 14 that we don't have because they're too shame to come out and say so, right? So how, what, what, what project management software was this man using to finagle these women out their coins like that is what I'm trying to figure out. And we're gonna talk about it today and hopefully y'all can help me out, okay? Let's collaborate on some answers. Maybe they told you and you just missed it because you still have so many questions, L. It gotta be you. It wasn't me. It just was not me. It was them. I'm gonna try my hardest not to victim blame, okay? It's real easy to go for that low hanging fruit or these swindled ladies on this show over here, but it's gonna be difficult. I'm not gonna lie to you because I just cannot understand it all. So let's go ahead and talk about this. Give me I don't Focus up, L. Focus up. Like, pay attention. Girl, you in here giggling. Ain't nobody said nothing yet. All right, so let's get into this tender swindler. So first, we when, when the documentary first opens, we meet this lady from, is she from Norway? Again, I'll be out here winging it, y'all. I'm winging it. Lovely lady named Cecile was talking about her experience with online dating and how you got to set up your profile the right way. And she was talking about how she's like a romantic and she's uh, memorized, you know, the whole Beauty and the Beast story. That was kind of like a little boop to me because mm, Belle had to go through some abuse to find the one. Hey, I'm just saying. So she's talking about her experience on Tinder and she sees this guy's profile on Tinder. His name is Simon and he's dressing well. He's on a yacht, he got cigars. He got watches, he got suits. And so she swipes right on him. He has already swiped right on her and it is a match. And they decide to meet up for a lovely date. Now, um, I have tried online dating before. I haven't done ten Tinder because of shit like this. I'ma just, I ain't, you know what I'm saying? I'm not judging folks who do use Tinder. Cause I know people who know people who have met their significant other slash spouses on Tinder. I'm just saying for me. No thanks. My friends would always say, L, you gotta go out and like do stuff. You know, the man not gonna come knock on your door and be like, hey, you wanna be in a relationship with me? So you're gonna have to put yourself out there. So I said, all right, cool. And I did that and it's wildebeest out here. I'm cool. Let's let the wildebeest, let's let them mess up somebody else's life. I would prefer for my life not to be messed up. I already had that happen one time. I'm good to go on that. I'm trying to meet somebody in front of um, Hungry Man Dinners in the grocery store. So she meets the guy and they're gonna go out on on a wonderful date. They decide to meet for coffee at the Four Seasons Hotel, which is where he's staying in London, right? And she gets there early and he's not there yet. And so she texts him on WhatsApp and was like, hey, I'm here. And he comes downstairs and he is, you know, walking to her and she's very impressed with the way that he looks, right? Because let me tell you something. One thing I will say about his swindling ass, he could dress now. Oh no, Simon wasn't gonna be out here looking crazy. Simon was gonna put together him some threads, okay? Anyway, so they meet at the thing for coffee and they talking and they having conversation and he tells her that he is the Prince of Diamonds, okay, right out the gate. That his daddy is has made him the CEO of LLD Diamonds and that's what he does for a living. Pause. 
It don't work like that. Billionaires just don't be on Tindler. I'm Tindler. Billion, I'm struggling with that word. Billionaires don't be on Tinder. For me, if I'm hearing that, I'm immediately knowing that you, you full of shit. Comment down below and let me know if you feel like billionaires gonna be on Tinder in the first place. I forgot to say his name. His name is Simon Leviev, okay? And he's Israeli. And Simon said, we're gonna do some business out of town. We, I want you to come. And she's like, hell yeah, I'm coming. Pause. Because, no baby, this is not sex in the city. This is real ass life. And they be trafficking people out here, okay? So you just gonna let them just be out here with you in the friendly skies? Now that I said the cat, you go ahead and do your business in Belgium and you holler at me when you come back. I gotta go to work in the morning. So Simon tells Cecilia to go pack your bag and you get your passport and you, you know, we're gonna take you back and we're gonna go to, to Belgium or whatever. Fell into the trap pool thing. She was like one of them little bugs that go into the Lavinus fly trap. She said she gets back with her passport and her stuff and whatever. And he got a whole team of people with him, right? And she been riding this Rolls Royce. So it's the, and it's a lady and a little baby, right? His little girl. Cause at the little coffee meetup, he told her that he had a daughter, but that the mama and him are not together anymore, but he still takes care of her, them. I'm thinking, all right, pause. Because who taking their child on a first date? Because people are nuts. Exposing your children to nutty buddy ass people is probably not the best idea. Especially if you don't even know that person. Y'all had coffee for like an hour and a half. He was like, girl, go get your drawers. We about to go to Belgium. That don't make no sense like that. Then when they all together, they separate in cars to go somewhere, child. And he don't even ride in the car with her. He puts her in the car with the baby mama and the daughter. Pause. Why would you do that? That lady could have been allergic to children. Who brings their baby mama on the first date? Comment down below. Let me know where your pauses are. Okay, where's your pause? And they go to the hotel and Simon clapped them cheeks. Okay, that's when we start to hear him kind of laying the foundation for the fact that being the Prince of Diamonds is very, you know, rough and scary. Oh, you know, he needs to be supported. He just has so much on, so much responsibility, so much pressure on him. Pause. I'm not a therapist. Okay, that's what you need a therapist for, okay? Um, especially if we're on our first date. I don't care. So he was in jail in South Africa. They were persecuting him because he was Jewish. And I was like, pause. Brothers and sisters from the continent, from South Africa. Okay? I know about, you know, apartheid. I understand about the racial issues that are still permeating South Africa. I didn't know that Jewish folks was intertwined up in that thing as well. Was that a lie? Because I didn't do my Googles now. I will because I want to know and it's my responsibility to know. But is that a thing? Because I feel like it's not. He just needs somebody to be there and support him, okay? And I'm going to be that person. That's the lady thinking in her mind. He's getting paid handsomely to be under all that stress. Let his stress, stressful ass go sit down at the therapy. Even if he wasn't a swindler, that's his representative. I don't know where her red flag detector was. Was it in the shop? Did you need to change the batteries? So his phone starts to ring and it's ringing and ringing and ringing. And he's like, oh, bro, we so crazy busy getting diamonds out the mine. You probably should just go back home. Girl, ain't no way. So she was like, all right, you know, I was disappointed, but I went on ahead and went home. I mean, what I'm gonna do? And this is when the music in the, the documentary starts to change. So I know the swindle about to start. You know, she's talking about how they start to text all the time. And, and so he comes back to London, right? Because he had to go to the equator child, I don't know. And he's like, yeah, come to the hotel. Pause. Don't summon me, all right? We gonna meet, you understand me? 2022, it's wild out here, all right? I don't care if you got money. If you got money, that makes it easier for you to kill me. That's just my... <laughs> she says to him, hey, Simon, you know, I'm going home to Oslo. Norway, she's from Norway. Did I say that already? I don't know. Wanna see you? And, and Simon was like, girl, they don't have nothing to do in um, Norway. I don't have any business there. And it's like... Pause. Do you have, you a billionaire. So you only go places where you work. You have your own jet. So you could literally go and park that bitch on top of a mountain just to say you did it. So you telling me you like me so much, but you can't get on a plane and just sit down for a little while till the plane just takes you from where you are to where I am. She was like, oh, I just miss you so much. I'm never gonna be able to see you. Three o'clock in the morning, he texts her and like, hey girl, guess what? You ain't never gonna guess where I'm at. Girl, come to my hotel. Pause. 
because that's a booty call. I don't give a damn what continent you on. I don't give a damn how much money is involved. A booty call is a booty call. I Listen, if you calling me at three o'clock in the morning to bring my booty to the place where you are so that you can clap my cheeks, that is a booty call. They at the hotel and they have a wonderful evening and he's like, you know, I just really feel so special. Our relationship is so special. I just really want you to be my girlfriend. Of course I'll be your girlfriend. So he's like, listen girl, if we gonna be together, you need to really know what you get yourself into. This business that I'm in is very dangerous. I need you to support me, girl. I need you to be here for me and stand by my side as my girlfriend. And of course she was like, hell yeah, boy. Why am I so dramatic? I'm sickening. But that's what happened though. He was like, yeah, hey, I got I got this thing going on and it's so dangerous. And you know, I gotta have security with me all the time. And this is PETA, you know, they were showing a picture of the body of PETA. So she's like fully like thinking that this is, you know, that she's involved with this person that really needs her support because of the dangerous industry that they're in, i.e. the diamond industry. So now we meet Pranilla, okay? Pranilla is another one that's been swindled, bless all. And she is in Sweden. Pranilla is on um, Tinder, comes across Simon's profile. She swipes on him. It's a mad. I'm in Amsterdam for business. Do you want to come and see me? And I'm thinking, pause our first date you gonna have me on a flight like what are we talking about like she's like was like well yeah he got my passport information and booked me a flight and i thought that was a very nice gesture pause because what you need my passport for i've never flown on a pj before i've only flown commercial and i've flown internationally quite a few times i've not needed to um have a passport to book the flight my international cousins let me know if you need your passport to book the flight if that was the case let me take a train, cause I know y'all big on trains overseas. You want me to just give you my fingerprints too? Pranilla is in Amsterdam with Simon. Oh, they're having lunch at a restaurant and he orders the entire menu, having a good old time. And he tries to like make a move on her and she wasn't really receptive to it. And then he was like, oh, nope. She's, you know, said that even though it wasn't like, they weren't like romantic or whatever, that she still missed him. All right now, I ain't gonna pause that even though I really should. I don't know, it just, that seemed suspect to me. I never really believed that they were just friends because the swindle doesn't work to me without like a romantic component. Cecile is, you know, fully just in love with Simon. So Simon says, you know what girl? I'm gonna give you $15,000 a month to go find us a house. That's our budget. So she's like, why are we gonna live together? All right, y'all, it's time for the swindle. All right, the music then changed again. So you know he about to do something shifty. Cecile says she in the bed, okay? And it's three o'clock in the morning. And she get a text from Simon and Simon say, Lord Peter hurt. Tonight is the night, it happened tonight. And Cecilia's like, oh my goodness, what happened? So he leaves her a voice message like, baby, we at war. Girl, I'm so glad Peter was here cause if he wasn't here, I'd be dead. And I'm gonna tell you the guys on the truth. If whoever was coming after them managed to do that, they need to rethink their profession, their choice in life, because they didn't do nothing. It looked like Peter tripped on the rug and like hit his head on the countertop. Suck it up, my guy. Put some iodine on it, put some bastard tracing on it, and go your ass to bed. Talking about, yeah, we in a war. No, you not. He's like, baby, don't worry about it. Just go to bed. You woke me up, though. Don't tell me don't worry about it. You don't worry about it. That's a pause. That's a pause messing with that girl like that. He's once again laying the foundation for support. So Simon was in danger. So the next day he leaves her a voice note, okay? Not a phone call and says, hey, um, girl, listen, the security has said that we can no longer use our credit cards because my enemies are tracing us based upon my credit card usage, okay? So I need you to help me. Like, can we just get a card and you can like send me the card? That way I can just have like cash to move around because you know, we not safe right now. So here's the pause, okay? We, we talking about two people. One person has a regular job, all right? The other person is a billionaire. Why then would the billionaire with his billionaire lifestyle need me who works at the local credit union to get you a credit card. So my girl goes ahead and gets the platinum Amex and he maxes it out and I'm thinking pause. So then Simon doubled down on it. That Simon said, listen baby, um, are we waiting on this whole Amex thing to take, to, to, to get ready? Um, I need you to bring me $25,000 cash. I'm gonna bring me the cash because we are, we at war. 
So she's like, listen, what am I supposed to do? I don't have $25,000. My girl goes to take out a loan, puts it in her suitcase and goes to where Simon Raggedy is at and gives him the $25,000. As soon as she gets there, the phone starts ringing like you're not safe. You got to delete your Instagram. I don't know. And then he's like, Cecilia, you got to make your Instagram private because his enemies can track her like to use her to get to him. Because if, if the credit card is in his name, in your name, right? And they not tracing his no more because his is security, whatever the hell, wouldn't they just trace yours too? This is when I start to get aggravated because when you in love, you do do stupid stuff. I ain't gonna lie because I did it before. That's why I was married, okay? We not about to we not about to sit here and play stupid, Cecilia. Like this this the part where I couldn't even, I, I can't even let you slide. I'm trying not to victim blame. That's really it because I'd be lighting your ass up, Cecilia, if that wasn't the case, okay? I'm really trying to keep it positive over here and I'm trying not to take it there. But at this point, I'm getting aggravated. Then to make matters worse, a little while later, Peter calls on the phone and Simon puts it on speakerphone. Simon, bro, you in danger. Okay, they know where you are, they coming. Okay, they coming, they know where you are. We gotta get you out of here. I'm gonna put you on a plane. The plane is gassed up and ready to go. I can't tell you where you going. Turn off all the lights. Here goes Cecilia. Oh my God, did we lock the doors? Girl, if you don't get your babe in the woods head ass out of here, what you think a door lock gonna do, my baby? What? Then my guy Simon gets his shit and leaves Cecilia. <laughs> it's really not funny. It's really sad. He left her in wherever they said it was coming to get him from. All right, girl, you be cool. Like, I'm gonna see you later. You stay here and be in danger. Let me know what happened. He'll call me and tell me on WhatsApp. What? And then she gonna say, cause you know, everything was fine. Cause he sent me the geotag. He's in, in Stockholm. You know who else is in Stockholm? Pranilla. So Pranilla in Stockholm. And he's like, hey girl, I'm here. I'm touched down in your city. Let's go. We about to do it. Now we back with Paul Cecilia. <laughs> he making her ass earn it. You hear me? Simon got her Amex card, right? And he texts her and is like, listen, the, the card is blocked. Like you gotta call American Express and see what's going on. Call the Amex and doing the customer service stuff. She's like texting him like, how much did you spend? She gets it fixed and then two hours later, he called back, back like, the limit is not enough. We need you to get the limit increase. It's quickly adding up, right? And he keeps telling her like, listen girl, the deal is almost done. Thank you so much for supporting me. You gonna be my wife one day. Just that, 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 that whole thing. Poor dumbass thing. So now we cut back to Pranilla. All right, now Pranilla the one that's been getting off easy. So Simon says, come on girl, we about to go to Mykonos. You wanna come with us to Mykonos? And she like, she, let's go. I got a new little girlfriend I want you to meet. I kind of clocked that they were probably together together. But I kind of feel like they were a unit, if you catch what I'm saying. You know what I'm saying? You know, he's taking them out for dinner and he's taking them to the club and they go to like the Billabong Society or something. Like some Billa, the Baccarat. I forgot the name of the club, but it's a club for a billionaire. Celia at home stressing out, pulling all her eyelashes out, trying to figure out a way to get him out the war. But he's taking all these other bitches to the club on, on her dime, renting yachts and shit. Like he spent the summer with Polina, his girlfriend, and his friend, Pranita. So I'm thinking... That don't feel right to me. Bon Bonnier, that's the name of it. Bon Bonnier Club. And he ain't take, he ain't, I'm telling you, he didn't take this girl, Cecilia, nowhere. You, all Cecilia got is debt and stress, child. That's, she takes out another loan, right? She takes out a $50,000 loan and a $25,000 loan. She get another credit card for $10,000 and she sends it to him. That baby Cecilia says that she has taken out $250,000 to give to this man. Cause she was like, you know, this is not what I signed up for. And you know, I'm getting really nervous at this point. And you know, I really haven't seen him in such a long time. They finally see each other, right? And he's like, I'm gonna come give you the check to pay off the debt. And so she says when she sees him, he acting funny. Like he's acting like cold toward her, like drops the check off to the bank and she's like, okay, cool. So she doesn't see the check in her account. So she calls the bank and is like, listen, baby, this check is trash. It ain't worth the paper that it's printed on. So my guy Simon won't answer the phone for poor Cecilia. So when he finally does answer the phone, he got an attitude. That man said, I don't know what to tell you. I did my deal. So the baby caller and makes help people. 
and they send over a team, okay? And the people get over there and she spill all the tea. She telling them all the lies she told, all the things he said to say, all the things she did. And they were like, do you have a picture of this guy? And they, she showed him and she was like, and the people was like, oh yeah, that's him. Tell her that he does that for a living. He's not the son of a billionaire. He's not the Prince of Diamonds. She said it in the documentary. She was like, how could somebody be so evil? I thought he knew me. And in my mind, I'm thinking, baby, he did know you, my love. Nobody ever talked about this guy's family. You don't have no cousins, church members, friends that you knew since elementary school. Where's your foundation at, Simon? Didn't nobody question it. All right, Pernilla girl, you thought you was just about to be trotting all around the globe in Europe, huh? Nah, baby, it's your turn to get swindled. She gets a lot of messages from Simon and he's sending her news articles about you know, it's going real dramatic with the family. The, his daddy getting questioned and he got questioned and some of his cousins got arrested. You know, they ha are suspected of smuggling diamonds, telling her that he and his family are like in trouble. So the next day she gets some more messages from Simon. He going off and he sends her pictures of Peter who has been, you know, injured. The same pictures that he sent to Paul Cecilia. They got all our stuff locked up and tied up with this investigation. And if you could just see your way to give me some money, I would really appreciate it. And so Pernilla was like, you know what? I do have $30,000. So now back with Cecilia. Cecilia has checked herself into the psychiatric ward because she has nine creditors coming after her like, sis, coins, where's, where's my, and now she's questioning, is Peter really his bodyguard? Was that really his baby mama? Did he rent this little girl off of rentachild.com? Like, what is going on? I, I I have to do something about this. So she goes to a news outlet and she tells them like, listen, I have been swindled. So the journalists are able to use their journalistic means to get some more information about some of the other women that Simon has defrauded. So they get a lead on a man named Shimon Hayut, who is an Israeli citizen who was arrested for doing the same thing. They are able to confirm that that is the same person. So we find out that Shimon has been doing this since Shimon was 18 years old. Now, meanwhile with Pranilla, he's doing the same thing, right? Oh girl, don't worry about it. You took our buku money and you gave me all your money. Don't worry about it. I'm gonna pay you back. I sent the check to the bank and they deposited it. It's fine. She calls Simon, says, oh, the check ain't never come. Simon said, well, I don't know what to tell you. It left our account. He was like, oh, I don't know what to do. I just, you know, we still caught up with this stuff. Can you get us a flight? And what we could do is, and then when we connect, I'm going to give you this watch that will then take care of the debt. Because if that's the case, if you could easily sell the watch to get $100,000, why would he not do that himself instead of asking you for money? Okay, so Pranilla has gotten swindled okay and she sent him thirty thousand dollars and then she sent him another 10 and she's booking them flights and all kind of stuff you could come pick up this watch you sell a watch not me i'm not selling nothing that's another pause so have we sat down and had a discussion about said enemies is what i'm trying to understand like what what why are they your enemies what do they want from you do they think you carry diamonds in your pocket so the journalist says well do you know where he is and pranilla was like shit i not only know where he is i'm about to go see his ass on tomorrow he's in munich he's in germany and so they were like shit we gotta get to you quick baby because we gotta get a sting happening so they, they tell her to you know do her plans as usual that they gonna hide and like take his picture. And they do that and they do get pictures, but they are spotted. He saw the photographers. And so they hurried up and got in a car and they were like, you know, speeding off and, and um, Pranilla was in the car with her. So she gets out the car the next day, they on the phone with Simon and she confronts, she's on the phone with Simon and, and she confronts him. And she's like, listen, what's going on? I want you to tell me the truth. The truth about what girl, what you? So they ran the story, the tender swindler Lord. Now we get to meet Eileen, y'all. Eileen is in Prague in the Czech Republic and she is um, on her way back somewhere. She had the airport. Boy, she was with her boyfriend, right? And she gets an article. Somebody texts her article about the Tinder swindle and she clicks it and it's her boyfriend on the picture. And she's like, um, what? She learns about Pranilla. She learns about Cecilia. She starts to like put two and two together and realize that whatever he did with them, he did with her. Eileen has given him a total sum of $140,000. Again, I don't know what that equates to in US dollars. I just know it's $140,000 in whatever currency more than his raggedy ass needed. My girl Eileen said, you know what? 
I done called the police. The police said, girl, you got to give us time. We got, we need time to build this case. Um, Eileen said, nah, baby, because soon as he manages to finagle his way on the airplane, he is out of here, okay? I got him in my grasp right now. I'm about to do something near, okay? I need to get my coins back. His face is all over the news. Can't get any more um, swindle victims on Tinder anymore. He's like, listen, I need money. You got to help me. Maybe you could just pawn your car. One thing I know for sure is that your wardrobe, my guy, is full of Gucci and Louis and Hermes and Prada and like... Balenciaga. And so she was like, she, what I'm about to do is I'm about to stick you for your paper via these uh pants. Like, babe, I'm gonna come sell you clothes for you. Let me just sell them. That way we can get some money because you can get some real money with that and blah, 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 blah. And so he's like, all right, cool, cool, cool. So they meet up and, you know, they do whatever. But before she leaves him, they go to visit a, cos um, a plastic surgeon in Prague. And Simon is like, listen, this whole thing, rejuvenated baby it got to go i want a new nose new lips new chin put some fillers in my forehead like he trying to get a whole ass new face and the man was like nah babe i'm not about to do that so she took all his clothes and never saw his ass again <laughs> don't play with eileen and comes unglued do you hear me he calling this lady and she not answering the phone and he losing his mind in the woods okay and he's like you gotta give me my money what's going on it doesn't take you three like he like talking through his teeth and like being real aggressive with her via voicemail. I had asked you to knock if you wanted to buck, but you didn't knock. So you don't want to buck. So like, stop talking to me. Long story short, Simon ends up getting arrested, not for fraudulence, not for stealing and lying and cheating and swindling, and f but for a fake passport. And he gets sentenced to 13 months in jail, does five months in jail, okay? Do you understand the frustration of knowing that that guy did all that, ruined people's lives, and did five months in jail? It takes longer to get a passport sometimes. A, a woman could have gotten pregnant before he got arrested and still not had her baby by the time she got out, by the time he got out. So my guy Simon is living in, in Israel and he is apparently living high on the hog. I don't know how this man is getting his coins, but my first guess would just be that, you know, the same women who like threw themselves at like um, Ted Bundy or the people that are supplying his lifestyle currently. He's got a new girlfriend, she's a model. Cause there are so many attributes that the human population, the human um, race has, so many good things. But when I tell you human beings are generally trash, it's people that sold marijuana that have gotten decades in jail and didn't ruin not one life. I, listen, you ain't never gonna make me understand. You ain't never gonna make me understand. And there was women still owe that money. So if you could just comment down below and answer all the questions that I had after the pause. Okay, because I know it was like 22 questions that I had. If you have your own self queries, put them in the comments. Let's talk about it. We got to talk it out. Really enjoy watching this. Thank you for suggesting it, y'all. You listen, keep the suggestions coming. Okay, I really appreciate it. And I will talk to you later. Um, bye.